There have been a lot of questions about methylene blue, especially regarding the anti-aging properties of methylene blue. So in this video, we will look at the science behind this compound and its potential benefits for extending lifespan and promoting overall health. Now, methylene blue, often recognized as a dye or medication, has recently sparked interest in the realm of anti-aging research. But what exactly is methylene blue? Now, at its core, methylene blue is a synthetic compound with a striking blue color. Originally, it was used as a dye and then later as a medication for various medical conditions from the late 1800s on. Now, its therapeutic potential goes far beyond its dyeing capabilities. Methylene blue is a fairly potent antibiotic and antiviral agent and was used to treat malaria and urinary tract infections before the development of penicillin and other antibiotics. So it was sort of our first antibiotic that we had. And even today, methylene blue is used in the emergency room for conditions like cyanide or carbon monoxide poisoning. It can be given orally with a fairly high bioavailability. That means that a lot of it actually gets in or by intravenous uh, injection. Now, as we age, our bodies undergo numerous physiological changes from cellular damage to DNA mutations and oxidative stress. Now, these factors contribute to the aging process, leading to a decline in physical function, skin aging, muscle wasting, and increased susceptibility to diseases. Poor nutrition and lifestyle choices, of course, have further let's say, exacerbated and accelerated our health decline through obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Now, I have discussed in a previous video that at the start of many of these diseases is mitochondrial dysfunction. Once our mitochondrial health declines, our cells can sustain damage from an increase in reactive oxygen species that are generated at the inner mitochondrial membrane. So as the mitochondria are you know, malfunctioning or they have problems, they generate these reactive oxygen species, which are extremely damaging to our cells, right? However, emerging research suggests that method in blue may offer a promising solution to combat aging at the cellular level, particularly through its interactions with the mitochondria. Now, method in blue acts as a redox molecule, meaning it can accept and donate electrons within cellular pathways. And this property enables methylene blue to enhance mitochondrial function by supporting the electron transport chain. And that's where our cellular energy in the form of ATP is produced, leading to improved energy production and reduced oxidative stress, as well as a reduction in these reactive oxygen, oxygen species. So we're having less of these reactive molecules manufactured when we have methylene blue, methylene blue involved here, right? The animal studies have provided compelling evidence supporting the anti-aging effects of methylene blue. Research has shown that supplementation with methylene blue can extend lifespan in various organisms, including worms, flies, and even mice. Furthermore, preliminary human studies suggest that methylene blue may offer benefits for age-related cognitive decline, especially dementia of Alzheimer's type and Parkinson's disease, as well as cardiovascular diseases. In a 2023 review in Cureos, the authors state that methylene blue is a promising treatment for neurobiological disorders, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and traumatic brain injury. Animal studies and clinical trials have demonstrated its potential to improve cognitive function, reduce oxidative stress, and protect against neurodegeneration. However, of course, more extensive clinical trials are needed to confirm these findings and address you know, some of the adverse effects and there are safety concerns as well that need to be discussed, right? In my opinion, though, the safety concerns are mostly dose-dependent as methylene blue is a hormetic drug where lower or proper amounts, let's say, can be therapeutic, while higher amounts may achieve the opposite effect. So it's very important not to overdose on this because then it actually can become toxic, right? So despite its potential benefits, it's essential to approach methylene blue supplementation with caution. Like any compound, it carries potential risks and side effects, of course, especially at high doses. The generally accepted safe oral dose for, and this is important, pharmaceutical-grade methylene blue. So there is methylene blue that's still used as a coloring dye, and then there is pharmaceutical-grade, which does not have some of the contaminants like heavy metals in there, for example. So pharmaceutical-grade methylene blue can be taken orally, and the general recommended safe dose is 0.5 to 2 milligrams per kilogram body weight. This is, of course, not medical advice at all. Now, there are real contraindications to taking methane blue, like, for example, pregnancy, a G6PD enzyme deficiency. So this is something that you're born with. It's an enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And that is an important enzyme that if you can't break down certain compounds um, like methylene blue or 
high dose of vitamin C that can lead to a hemolytic, hemolytic anemia. But a blood test, this is a one-time blood test that you have to do to find out if you're suffering from a deficiency in this enzyme. It's something that usually doesn't change through your lifetime. And then you can rule this out. At the lower doses, it is debatable whether the blood test is needed. Out of caution, I would always recommend it though. Or another contraindication would be the use of uh, SSRIs, so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And it's usually at higher doses because methylene blue itself can act a bit as an antidepressant. It's actually used in psychiatry to treat various psychiatric conditions, including depression. So it can affect serotonin levels. And if you've already taken a medication that increases serotonin levels, there can be something called serotonin syndrome, which is also, of course, an extremely dangerous condition, right? So you should always, of course, consult your doctor prior to taking methane blue, especially if you're taking other medications, right? And again, in my opinion, the dose that's recommended, these 0.5 to 2, and sometimes it's actually in the literature up to 4 milligrams per kilogram per day is extremely high. And uh, I'll tell you, so for me personally, I weigh about 80 kilograms, let's say. So again, I could take up to uh, 4 milligrams per Kilogram. So this, of course, is a pretty high dose, like something on the order of uh, 320 milligrams a day, which is something that I think most people really wouldn't. We're talking here more about intravenous use. And uh, I would not recommend these doses, even 0.5 milligrams per kilogram for an you know 80 kilogram person like myself would be 40 uh, milligrams per day, which I think still is very high. And again, I would not recommend doses that go even that high. And I don't think it's necessary. Keep in mind, it's a hormetic drug. So, you know, if you go overboard, first of all, you might get an adverse effect as it affects, for example, your gut microbiome. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But you might also have other issues with it. And you might not get better uh, effects that you're looking for in terms of anti-aging and cognitive effects, right? So I have been using Methyl in Blue, the pharmaceutical grade, uh, orally three days per week for the past two months. And on those days, I take 10 drops, which is five milligrams. Each drop is 0.5 milligrams twice a day. And um, there are really no uh, low-dose, long-term studies with human subjects available to my knowledge. So out of caution, what I will do, I will take, you know, two-week uh, breaks here and there, uh, you know, just to make sure that I have some time that it clears out completely. Now, one possible long-term issue may be the disruption of the gut microbiome. Since Method in Blue is an antimicrobial agent, it is feasible that not only the bad bacteria, right, bad bacteria are eradicated, you know, because it is an, an antimicrobial and has been used again to treat bacterial infections, but it may also affect some good bacteria in your gut microbiome, and that could cause problems, of course. Now, there was a 2020 study in rodents, and that was sort of, you know, uh, presented as a long-term study, but it all, only really was four weeks. But um, they showed that over this four-week period, the low dose, which was 15 milligrams per kilogram per day, which is a huge dose, um, the mice that got that dose did not experience changes in their gut microbiome. So this was okay for them. While the high dose, 50 milligrams per kilogram per day, did affect them negatively in terms of their gut microbiome and did not improve their cognitive ability. They saw how well they were functioning in mazes and all that. So they tested how well their brain was functioning. And so the higher dose did not improve cognitive function, but it definitely caused concern about the gut microbiome, right? Again, much higher dose than we would take or I would recommend. So I don't think that it, it would be a huge impact on our gut microbiome, but this might also vary from person to person, right? So again, always use caution. This is not studied long-term. Talk to your doctor first, right? Now, I have noticed uh, a significant improvement in mental clarity and focus. And again, methane blue does cross the blood-brain barrier and can improve the function of your neurons. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, it supports the mitochondrial function in your cells. And that is extremely important, especially as we get older, because mitochondrial function and you know, mitochondrial density decreases with age. When you're younger, you have more mitochondria and they work better. That is one of the hallmarks of aging. And method in blue can, to some extent, reverse that and make it better. So there is an anti-aging property with any tissue. I mean, whether we talk brain or, or skin or muscle or organs, you know, it does affect a lot of uh, pathways there. So I think this can be very positive because once our mitochondria are functioning better, the cell's health will improve greatly actually, right? So uh, more energy, less fatigue by the late afternoon. Those are some things that I've experienced. I sound more functional, I get more done. Um, and it, there is maybe a mild mood elevation as well. Again, it is used in psychiatry sort of as an um, antidepressant or antipsychotic sometimes as well. So it does have an effect on your mood, which I would call a positive effect there, right? I've also noticed improvement in skin and hair. 
And that was actually very interesting to me. So, um, you know, that was not the main reason why I'm taking it, but I did notice improvement both in skin and hair. And that's, I thought, was very uh, noticeable and, and pretty amazing that even over that short period of time, that that was noticeable for me. Now, um, it's interesting that red light and near-infrared light can amplify the, the efficacy of Method in Blue. So on the days that I take it, I spend either 20 minutes in the sun outside, you know, could be indirect, remember, um, near-infrared radiation is reflected from, you know, trees and all that. So if there's nature around, you're usually good, right? Or I use the LED near-infrared bed that we have in our clinic, right? So <clears throat> I think the combination is actually worth doing here, right? Now, as a word of warning, it, when you take Method in Blue orally, uh, it will color your tongue blue, extremely blue, for a little while, and your urine will get blue or green. I mean, this is not a big deal. This is something that goes away, but that is something that you notice right away. So that is very profound with this medication, right? It also tastes awful, <laughs> to be honest with you. Just like you think um, blue ink would probably taste like, right? So anyway, as the researchers continue to unravel these real mysteries of aging, I think that Method in Blue remains a, an extremely captivating you know, subject of investigation. Its ability to target multiple pathways implicated in aging makes it a very promising candidate for future anti-aging interventions. So in conclusion, while we're only you know, scratching the surface here of Method in Blue's anti-aging potential, I think the evidence thus far is undeniably intriguing. And um, from enhancing mitochondrial function to combating oxidative stress, this compound, Method in Blue, offers a very multifaceted approach to promoting longevity and vitality. So anyway, if you found this helpful, please don't forget to like and share this video. Also, if you are taking Method in Blue, if you have experience with Method in Blue, I would love to hear about it. Again, I only knew this from the emergency room, so it's always interesting for me. And back then, we used it again to treat uh, carbon monoxide or cyanide poisoning, which is very rare, so I never got to see the action. But if you're taking it, please leave a comment uh, how you're taking it and what you've experienced. And I'd love to hear that because it would actually greatly help other people as well uh, to learn from.